Welcome to this episode of The Drive. It's Dr. Whitfield. We're going to talk about the gut-brain axis of breast implant illness. <clears throat> I talk about this um, in consultation frequently. Um, there's problems with CGI, uh, cognitive impairment. There's problems with short-term memory loss, uh, consistently referred to as uh, brain fog. There's problems with anxiety and depression. And so I get asked all the time about this. Are these related? Can my uh, breast implants or breast implant illness be associated with any of these? And the short answer is yes. Uh, remember my definition of breast implant illness is it's a chronic inflammatory process. So you have chronic inflammation and you have a medical device that's playing a component because obviously when you put a foreign body in, you get chronic inflammation. So approaching it from that lens, you have this chronic activation of the immune system. And we know that from work published last year, uh, both by myself and other uh, scientists in the field, that the chronic inflammation can be worsened by a bacterial contaminant, Helicobacterium acne, Staph epidermidis. You can create these biomarkers, um, oxylipin 10 home, that are elevated. Other papers have been published about fibroblast growth factor 19. I'll be interviewing the scientists about that shortly on my show. <laughs> But going back to the gut-brain axis, so your gut and your brain are intimately associated. Everything we take into our body ultimately is uh, going to be dealt with through the lungs and the liver, and um, through detoxification, ultimately is going to get into the GI tract and eliminated. So, if we already have chronic inflammation and or any kind of chronic inflammation, it's going to affect our guts. Our gut houses approximately 70% of our, uh, think of our, our immune system tissues. And uh, in training, we learned uh, it to refer to it as GALT, gut associated lymphatic tissue. Not an incredibly exciting term, but certainly. When we're operating around the GI tract, the small intestine, the large intestine, there's something called the omentum, has all this uh, fatty tissue. It also has a host of uh, blood vessels, both in the omentum and in the, uh, basically the, the blood vessels that uh, fill uh, or um, kind of line what feeds the intestinal tract. And um, it's just lined with your lymphatic tissue, basically. And it's not something that, as a surgeon, you can see lymphatics. Lymphatics are very uh, small to the naked eye. You can't really appreciate them. Um, you can obviously uh, appreciate lymph nodes. And then from the lymph nodes, you would find the channels and are associated blood vessels with those lymph nodes. The, the problem with it if you have chronic inflammation that's affecting your gut from breast implants, breast implant illness like we were describing, you're gonna have all sorts of problems with potential imbalance in the gut creating dysbiosis. Everybody's heard of the microbiome and you can have imbalances in the microbiome, you can have dysbiosis, but what does that really lead to? Um, well, everything has to be absorbed that we take in, whether it's the fluids we drink or the foods we eat, that's what provides us the nutrients. And through absorption, we can get those nutrients into our bodies and then convert those into what we need to perform uh, all the cellular processes. And so for instance, if we can't um, take up the appropriate amounts of nutrients we can't make our neurotransmitters properly so that would relate uh, to an increased amount of anxiety and depression that we see in breast implant illness uh, also just in general i take care of a bunch of uh, patients who are uh, taking care of their families obviously taking care of children working typically uh, in addition to that uh, many times which creates 
a chronic form of stress and cortisol release. The um, I routinely am talking to patients about you know sleep patterns, etc., because all of these things cyclically feed back and are difficult um, for every patient. But going back to um, I mean gut dysbiosis. I guess we could talk for hours about this. Just yesterday I had a patient tell me she's tested uh, three different times uh, positively for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO on a breath test. And I guess I don't find it surprising. I, I just don't know what to make of it in each situation until um, we've had an opportunity to work with that patient. And in that setting, we're going to provide that patient with a working plan for detox uh, that begins in earnest, really probably once the explant's over, because it's going to be hard in that situation to help that patient from a detox standpoint if they've got that level of dysbiosis. The gut has to work with the liver to eliminate toxins, but if the inflammation is so bad that it can't, then it, that will impair and, and make liver detoxif detoxification slow or, or uh, sluggish. And that will lead to um, patients feeling you know worse. It doesn't necessarily alter their liver function test, uh, which um, the transaminases uh, are rarely uh, elevate in these situations. Um, I've had uh, cases and been told about cases where it's elevated, but that's not uh, as common. The, you know, microbiome disruption and autoimmunity risks from this uh, and imbalanced gut bacteria are high. Um, when we have dysfunction in the gut, it increased incidence of autoimmune uh, or autoimmune type, uh, I guess, uh, settings will have more problems with thyroid and joint pain and chronic fatigue. It's hard to draw direct uh, cause and effect, but um, there are associations in my practice with more and more autoimmune disease uh, issues, gut issues, and uh, breast implant associated symptoms. So, in those settings, uh, I got asked yesterday, actually, when I was doing another podcast uh, as a guest, like, what is the typical scenario and how do we go about healing one's gut, which I think is by far the most complicated aspect of taking care of our patients, and that's why we have a whole team devoted to running the SHARP program, including detoxification for our patients. But the, the issue is... I don't know when someone's going to actually get to uh, our clinic to be able to get started in doing this. And then, of course, I get asked all the time, can you just run sharp and will that help me? Or uh, can I explant somewhere else and um, run your program? So the answer to all those is yes. And you can sign up for uh, our um, information uh, online. Uh, give us your email, we'll submit um, that. You'll get a free downloadable guide I have created about inflammation. And then uh, we're going to have a newsletter coming out, so be on the lookout for that. But we know we can't take care of every single person in Austin, so we've created these programs to now uh, help patients uh, both in the group setting and then, of course, the individualized setting for the patients who uh, come in person to Austin. We're going to help other surgeons around the country as well uh, get compare, uh, prepared to help take care of patients in this way, the way we do. Um, we know reducing inflammation is definitely possible pre-op. I know this because um, post-pandemic, uh, we were doing different testing to look at inflammation. And as an example, if I got a patient who 
uh, was say uh, remote and hadn't had any uh, guidance on uh, specific nutrition parameters or anti-inflammatory diet uh, changes, uh, didn't understand specific supplementation patterns, and we were able to work with them from the start, uh, I would send them a test um, that looked at a thromboxane A2 metabolite. Uh, that's just a fancy urine test to gauge their inflammation and get a, a score. We have a new uh, inflammation test. It's more basic now. It's just for a color change to see if you have inflammation. It'll turn red. But this test was a quantifiable test. Now, we would run that supplementation program uh, through uh, Sharp and some settings it would take six months to get to uh, my office based on someone's logistics their work organizing child care, organizing travel um, getting their finances together. There are a lot of variables in that equation and then they would come and we would test them again the day of surgery to see you know, how that improved. And you could see, you know, changes. The problem with the test was it was super sensitive to diet changes and or taking any kind of anti-inflammatory medications. It would definitely um, change the actual um, uh, number. So it would lower it uh, rapidly. So in any event, uh, that company uh, ran out of funding and closed. So we no longer utilize that test. We now have a test um, that gives us a score by looking at different chemical reactions. Once that uh, is scored, that's something that's reproducible, just like a toxicity burden test, which I find to be extremely helpful in helping patients understand uh, what's going on. For all intents and purposes, as we develop surgical plans, get people on proper diets, nutrition, uh, really try to detoxify their lifestyle with making changes in, you know, fluids. So drink filtered water, um, don't drink out of plastic, try to drink out of ceramic, try to drink out of stainless, try to drink out of uh, glass. This will reduce your microplastic burden, it'll reduce your phthalate burden, your, it'll reduce your bisphenol burden. Um, I think uh, Huberman has discussed this on his podcast, and uh, Ron Patrick has discussed this on her podcast, but I've been talking about this uh, <laughs> before they were uh, talking about it, actually, which is hilarious. The... Um, The next things, um, you know, in terms of cleaning up your environment are sourcing your foods, really increasing the amount of dietary protein. I think uh, vegan diets are very difficult for um, most of my patients. So um, if they can balance out their diet, if that aligns with them, uh, great. If not, they have to really be careful about any ultra processed uh, vegan foods really concentrate on getting their protein content high enough because that will help them recover better. And then I'm going to harp a lot on air quality. I live in Austin, Texas. There's a lot of pollen from oak trees, cedar trees. There's a lot of mycotoxins from mold. Um, there are several types of air filters. Currently, uh, we use Jasper air filters in my office use Jasper in the operating rooms. We use IQ Air from Switzerland. Those are the uh, ones that I, I feel are the best currently. I also have used uh, uh, Austin Air in the past. So those are just three, you know, ways to really improve things. And then, um, there's the environmental working group that you can put all products in. You can also scan items in an app. 
and I'm going to give you the name of the app. Um, the app allows you, when you're at the store, to scan something to see the ingredients, and that that's important because you want to get things, um, you know, from food item and food items, especially you have to be careful about. So Yuka, Y-U-K-A is an app that allows you to scan and look at items, um, know exactly what's uh, in them and, and get a you know grade, if you will, about them. Same with the environmental working group. You can put all your products, skincare in there. Um, for patients who work with me, I put them on my supplementation. I trust implicitly you know, what we're doing in terms of supplements. I keep patients on supplements uh, prior to operation I don't discontinue them because I want their immune system working and functioning um, optimally so we're optimizing vitamin D levels um, C levels uh, glutathione levels uh, methylated B complex levels um, I probably need to mention uh, adding trace minerals that's something to add into each person's uh, regimen. Uh, I don't want people overdoing electrolytes, but so all of this goes to, if we have these imbalances in the gut-brain axis, we have dysbiosis in the gut, we're gonna have neurotransmitter imbalance, we're gonna have micronutrient deficiencies and macronutrient deficiencies. Um, to improve brain axis you know basically we do it as part of the explant process and really support patients uh, pre-op and post-op especially post-op support their uh, drainage pathways improve those um, my supplementation runs in parallel with detox currently for detox we're using uh, cell core um, we feel like they have very strong uh, detox supplementation. Our, our team is very comfortable with that. And currently that's what we are using. But we want to balance out your neur uh, neurotransmitters. So we want to improve the gut brain axis, decrease dysbiosis, optimize the micronutrients, improve the macro macronutrient uptake, improve absorption, once again, you know, improve sleep, get seven to nine hours of sleep, really try to balance out hormones, um, align everything so you feel better and better and better. And you got to do one day at a time. I would uh, be remiss if I didn't say all of this begins with, you know, working on yourself always. So uh, there's lots of ways to improve um, and each of us has to try to do that every day.